Good morning to you from my car. I seem to be sitting in my car quite a lot these days to do these videos. Um, well, it's a comfortable spot and uh, when you're not on location it's a private space. And uh, this morning I was thinking about a word and it's one word, elite. And we talk about elitism. Well, the Latin term is eligere and it means to select or to sort out. Dictionary definition is this, a class of persons considered to be superior to others because of their social standing or wealth, and I've added the word power. I thought of that saying, I don't know if it was a statement that was made about Margaret Thatcher or Margaret Thatcher said it, I'm not quite sure, you can correct me in the comments, but power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. And of course we understand that from the fall of Satan, the fall of Lucifer, how wonderful um, he was amongst the, the angels. He was the anointed cherub, did everything right until he fell, until he desired to have power for himself. And he wanted to set up his own elite, as it were. We tend to think of the elite in, uh, as, a, as a corrupt force. Um, when I need to think back in history to the peasants' revolt, I think it was the 14th century, and the landowners weren't treating the peasants correctly and uh, they rose up. In this country some years ago we had what was known as the poll tax and it was a very unfair tax people felt because it was a tax on the individual and people were out in the streets protesting about it and Margaret Thatcher relented in the end and gave in to it and took it away. Well there's another term that is the complete opposite of the elite and uh, it's often used amongst working classes in Britain, and it's called the hoi polloi. Those of you in, in America probably haven't heard that term. The hoi polloi, and it means in Greek, the many. But it often is referred to in a, in a rather derogatory way. It refers to the sort of vulgar and unthinking masses of people. Um, a class of people who always recognise that there's somebody above them. And I suppose in Britain very much is that that is the case. Uh, we saw the way that um, people paid their respects, as it were, as I spoke the other day, their deference to the, to the, uh, the monarchy. They lined up in their thousands. And of course, I won't argue against the people that had a really heartfelt feeling about that, but I'm looking at the way people defer in general, not specifically to that, but the way we defer to higher powers. And we're referred to as the hoi polloi. You know, very often in social class terminology, we talk about us and them. It's us and them. You know, it's that other side, those on the other side of the tracks. And um, the masses. We are the masses, the unthinking masses, according to the elite. And very often we are manipulated. We're a class of people that are manipulated into thinking the way that they want us to think the way that they want us to behave. And so, in a sense, we're, we're relegated to the level of peasants. And um, what are peasants worth? Let's face it, we're just cannon fodder. We're just fodder for them, the elite. We're just fit to die. Uh, something comes to mind uh, specifically that, that illustrates it, and it's the, the, the way that things went on the Titanic when it struck that iceberg. Three classes of people, and the ones, of course, in the lower decks didn't have access to the lifeboats. The people in first class, however, they were the ones that got to the lifeboats first. And I'm assuming, I don't know, please correct me again in the comments, that a lot of the people that survived would have been first class. And the poor folk at the bottom, the peasants, the, the hoi polloi, uh, wouldn't have had the chance to get to the boats. And if you've seen the film Titanic, how they struggled to get out. And um, there was no concern for them. If you didn't have the money to pay, you couldn't get out. And it just makes me think about that all the time now, the way that the world is going and the World Economic Forum, that the people that run these organisations, that are building the big bunkers for themselves, the subterranean places where they can hide when the difficulties come, excuse my dry throat, eugenics, those of you that have heard the word eugenics, eugenicists, people that want to depopulate the earth, 
get rid of the masses. That's something actually that um, Prince Philip, the Queen's husband, uh, made this very poignant remark some years ago. He said that uh, if he could reincarnate, he would come back as a deadly virus so that he could depopulate the world, get rid of all the unnecessary masses, I would think he was meaning. So, there's a man from the elite of society, how he regarded the masses, how he regarded the hoi polloi. But that's not our Lord, is it? So let's have a little couple of scriptures here that uh, talk about what Jesus refers to and how he regards us. Luke 8, verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Jesus has always had a um, desire for openness. The elite like to have knowledge for themselves. They like to think that they know things that we don't know. And uh, I'll be talking about this again when we, we, we look at things like Freemasonry and the occult. But um, I thought that particularly was, was poignant because uh, Jesus had everything out in the open. Nothing was hidden with him. But with the elite, knowledge is hidden. You've got to belong to a certain band of people, a certain strata, in order to gain that particular knowledge. But Jesus wasn't like that, was he? Everything was open with Jesus. Everything was made manifest. Nothing was hidden. We're starting to see that, of course, in the world, that things are starting to be revealed. But it's coming from hidden sources. It's coming from hidden places. And um, Jesus always had open speech. John 18, verse 20. It's another scripture I want to refer to here. Jesus answered them, and he said, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Jesus always spoke out. He didn't have an elite um, body of knowledge that he wanted to keep for himself. He didn't have an elite group of people. When he called the disciples, his purpose was that they would take the, the truth to the world, that they would spread it abroad, that they would make it known. There wouldn't be something that the, would be kept for a certain number of people and that the, uh, the hoi polloi could just go and basically just die. And so, knowledge is power. Knowing things is power. Understanding things is power. But when we understand the true gospel of Jesus Christ, when we know that Jesus is there because he wants all of us to come into the knowledge of the truth. There is no class system in the kingdom of heaven. There's no elitism. There's no sit over there because you're a lesser person. Yes, one day we will all get our just rewards. And um, those of us that have walked with God, the Lord will give us more talents, as the scripture says. But it won't be a thing to rejoice over. In a way, it'll be sad because there'll be people who could have done better, who could have achieved more. And of course, when you see elitism in the church, there's nothing worse. That's very often the case, isn't it, with um, what um, a brother of mine describes as the word faith money preachers. They set up a class, a distinction for themselves, an elite group of people in the church um, not necessarily that they are uh, possessing knowledge that they don't want to disseminate, but they possess a certain standing that they want to protect. And when that gets into the church, nothing is more destructive. I might be sort of <clears throat> going a little bit roundabout what I want to say, but basically this, that um, in the kingdom of God, God loves us all. He wants us all to come to a knowledge of the truth <clears throat> and a knowledge and an understanding of who he is. We have to fight against that desire to be part of an elite, part of a group that um, are special, 
and it gets into us sometimes as human beings we we have this desire to um, walk above in the world of course it's in the world of business uh, it, it's a very difficult thing because people want to get to the top and very often ruthless people will climb over one another to get there and uh, it's a sad thing too I just want to leave you with that thought today um, we'll talk more about elitism in terms of uh, the secret societies the way that they're working in the world the powers of the occult those that want to strip away things from from ordinary people steal rob destroy so that they can have a life for themselves that is above and beyond the masses the peasants as they call us and um, remember Jesus came for the lowly he came for the humble when that man couldn't fill his his seats in the wedding feast he went out into the country and he brought in the lame and the crippled and the blind and um, they came and enjoyed his feast the elite could make their excuses Jesus cares for all of us and he loves us all the same have a blessed day